Hello and welcome to Cracked Open, a podcast guiding you on your journey to becoming a vessel of unconditional love. And this is your host, Beck Mylonis, High Priestess, Channel, and Activator. Join me on this series as I share reflections, insights, and channel transmissions from my journey of walking the initiation path. Each episode is a unique transmission containing supportive frequencies to facilitate the deepest healing, activation, and reconnection with your soul. I invite you to open your mind and set the intention to receive this episode into your heart space. Let's go. Welcome back, beautiful souls, to another episode of Cracked Open. Today, I want to jump on and share some of the biggest blockages that I see that many healers, priestesses, medicine men and women, um, shamans, healers, psychics, whatever it is, people here for this deep soul purpose, soul mission, the biggest blocks that they have to self-belief, guys. I want to try and unpack this and share some of my story um, because what I'm seeing a lot, I've been doing a lot of readings for beautiful souls lately in the past couple of weeks and the common thread that I see coming through is that a lot of these souls who are coming to me is so tapped in, they're so tuned in, they're so on top of it, they know, you know, the messages, they're receiving the guidance, but then when it comes time to take that action or follow that guidance, they don't do it because they don't believe in themselves, right? I want to say that if you are trying to do this as a business, right? So this is not going to speak to everyone, this part of the podcast. There will be aspects in here as I'm talking about, um, you know, deepening and trusting your channel because not all of us are here to do this as a spiritual business. So I want to say if that part doesn't jive with you, all good. Just leave that part out, right? But I will be speaking to those people as well because I feel like that's a lot of my audience. You guys are here to be the game changers, the, um, the rebels, the ones who are changing the flipping the script and doing this as a business. So I want to say that running a sole business, right? Like running a business that involves you sharing your gifts in some way. It's a really big fucking initiation. Just had someone trying to call me guys. Don't be calling me when I am trying to do a podcast, Fuck. so it's a really big initiation, right? And if you are trying to be an entrepreneur in any capacity, even if you're not switching and turned on, it is a big initiation anyway, right? So if you have chosen to do this as a job, you've chosen to go out and share your gifts as a job, not only do you have the initiation of the fact that being an entrepreneur, I don't want to say it's hard because I don't want to create that reality. I don't want to speak into that dialogue, but it is also very, it can bring up a lot of stuff within you, right? In order to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to have everything um, kind of jiving at the same frequency. You need to have all your beliefs about yourself you need to have your expectations of the world, your money beliefs, your beliefs in what it takes to be successful. All of your inner stuff needs to be clear in order for you to be successful. Throw into that, guys, on top of that, throw into that an, a spiritual initiation, right? Throw into the impending pressure of, I know I came here to do something and I know my soul is going to put me through whatever the fuck it takes for me to get this, <laughs> to nail this, to be reaching the people I'm here to reach, to fulfill my gifts in some way. Throw that into the mix, guys. So you not only have the initiation of actually running a business, your business is going to teach you so fucking much and it's going to be the biggest initiation that you've had, but running parallel to that, you also have the impact or the pressure or the constant initiation process of unfolding of your soul trying to get you to a place where you are as clear a channel as you can be so you can really show up and serve your gifts to the highest capacity, right? So when your soul mission and your soul business are like this and they're intertwined, the initiation is going to be that much more intense, right? Because not only are you going to be navigating all the 3D stuff, like the marketing and trying to, you know, refine your message and trying to refine your audience and all of those things, but you're also going to be navigating all of the internal stuff, um, the upgrades, the changes in your mission, like the, oh, we were going to focus on this and this was the kind of person I was calling in and now something shifted in my mission and I'm being called to focus on this. So, oh, I've integrated and shifted through and embodied this now. And now I'm feeling called to speak about this, right? So it's like constant <laughs> is what I want to say to you. And I've been doing this for about four years now, right? In terms of like trying to have a spiritual business. The first year I was a coach. Some of you might know that about me. I started out as a coach and that was 
aligned, but it was super out of alignment in so many ways. It was what I needed to do to get to my next step, but it was also not what I was really here for. So it was a step in the way, but it was towards kind of where I was going. And the fucking heartbreak of failure, right? The heartbreak of I'm trying this thing that I really wanted to do. And everyone's told me that I'm not going to succeed. My parents have told me, you know, entrepreneurs never make it. It's a pipe dream, all this stuff, that pressure. And then all my conditioning of like wanting to be successful and all my conditioning around my self-worth being tied into, Hey dad, look at you. Fuck you. I'm succeeding now. All of this stuff, right. That was all playing out in the background the whole time. And then throw on top of that, the initiation process that started for me at the end of that year of the first year of my, well, actually it was like years leading up to that, but particularly in that first year where I was like, fuck it. If I'm here to be a healer, show me. Right. And then I had this huge opening to my channel and my gifts. And some of the stuff that was happening to me in that time was so unbelievable. Right. I thought I was going insane. When you have not tapped into this stuff before, you've not been familiar with this stuff. It's not something that you live and breathe. When you start channeling, when you start feeling into other realms, when you start doing healing work, when you start remembering past lives, any of this stuff, it's fucking nuts, right? Your human mind is going to freak the fuck out because it's like, this is so unfamiliar to me, right? So that's the first thing I want you to know. It's really unfamiliar for the ways that our brains have been hardwired to accept that there is other stuff beyond the physical realm that is going on. So you're probably going to go through all of this as you are, um, you know, trying to create a business or whatever it is, parallel to all the stuff around deconditioning the hustle mentality, deconditioning, you know, any beliefs you have around success, any beliefs you have around money, any beliefs you have around people showing up and paying you for your gifts, right? Any of the real world 3D shit, you're going to go through that, but you're also going to go through all of the, self-belief stuff around the spiritual realms and the metaphysical realms and am I really doing what I feel like I'm doing or am I just insane I remember the first few times that I started channeling past lives and it started with myself so I started by remembering my own past lives and I remember the first lifetime that came through for me was a priestess as a priestess or a channel or an oracle in Greece um and I don't know if you guys know the Oracle of Delphi, but it was linked into that. There was several kind of, they were called Pythias. And I think I was number two, right? So there's not just one Oracle of Delphi. If you've ever heard of that story, there's multiple ones. And the lifetime that came through for me to remember the moment I was like, okay, I open to my gifts. I open to be shown was this lifetime as this Oracle of Delphi, where I was channeling Apollo, right? Who's God of the sun and giving messages to people. And when I started getting these downloads about Greece and getting these downloads about um, the things that happen and all of that, I thought I was going fucking nuts because this is my first experience into all of that. I had to have that confirmed for me by readers, right? And then it was like when the reader was saying all the things that I was feeling and that I was hearing myself, I was like, fuck, this must be legit. And so I opened and I allowed that to come through, right? The next stage for me um, was then taking those gifts and taking the things that had awoke, awakened in me in remembering those lifetimes and starting to be like, oh, I'm here to do this. And I'm here to use this gift for and, and with other people, right? To, to help other people remember their past lives, help other people to move energy in the way that I've been moving my energy through my own body to heal myself this whole time. And that again was another leap in self-belief for me, because how do I know what I'm doing? How do I know what I'm doing? How do I know that this is true? How do I know that all the things that I'm channeling are legit? How do I know that I've actually helped that person to move that energy? How the fuck do I know? And the truth is, guys, we don't know. <laughs> I will never know until I die and I merge back into everything. I'm never going to know if I was right about all the things that I channeled, if I really was doing all the things that I thought I was doing in those realms, right? I can have a, a feeling or a knowing within when I connect to God or I connect to source or I connect to my higher self of like, yes, this is legit, but it's not for sure, right? It's not certain. There's no physical, tangible thing in our reality which can confirm that for us other than other people's validation or confirmation of what they're feeling and what they're seeing, right? So it's a shared delusion in a way. Um, and who's to say that none of this is fucking real, that I'm not really channeling aliens. I'm not really doing grid work. I'm not really doing all the stuff that I do. And it's all just a shared delusion with me and my audience. We're all fucking nuts. And we're going to wake up, you know, after we've died on the other side and be like, oh, that's really embarrassing. 
<laughs> we're all under this shared delusion, right? So you don't know is what I'm trying to say. You'll never get that certainty. What you can have is, and this is for the, sorry, I kind of like just launched right in there and didn't explain the context of what I'm saying. This is for those of us who don't trust our gifts. We don't trust our channel. We don't trust our ability to read energy. We don't trust our, you know, um, the messages that are coming through. We don't trust our, our, um, psychic gifts, whatever it is, right? You will never know whether that's true. The only way you will know whether it's true or not is when you follow those impulses, when you share those messages, when you share that message with someone who's come to a reading for you, or you share it with a friend or whatever it is, and you get that constant confirmation. So people might look at me today and be like, holy fuck, everyone that comes to a reading for me is like, how do you know this stuff? How are you so accurate in your readings? How are you such a clear channel? I don't fucking understand. The irony is guys, when it comes to myself and my own stuff, I really struggle to believe it. Like I have had to practice so much to get to this point where I can just deliver messages and know that they're legit. And the reason why I do that now is because of constant validation in the past, right? So I'm I come here and I speak a lot about how we should only self-validate and self-source and we shouldn't have to have things validated by other people because then we're relying on other people. But guys, that validation in the early stages of you sharing your gifts can be really important for you to start to trust yourself, right? And that's what I offer people. When they come to readings, I give them validation because what happens is we receive this download of like how big the vision for our soul is, right? And we don't believe it because we've got all this human self-belief shit. Oh, I don't believe that I'm good enough to do that. Oh, I don't, you know, that seems way too big. I'm never going to be able to do that. Or that's someone else. That's not me. Or fuck, that scares the shit out of me. So there's no way I could possibly be good enough. Or that's too big or whatever it is, right? And we have all this stuff. And so to have a reader or have someone else validate that for you, it's like, oh, fuck. I wasn't imagining this. I remember I did this reading for this woman and she was... It's going to come on this podcast soon. Actually, I work with her. Such a powerful healer. And she was quite a bit older than me. She'd been doing this for like 30, 40 years, long time. And something that she had always known and she'd always been told was that she was working with Christ energy, right? But she never said that aloud to anyone because she didn't really, well, it was like, I'm afraid that if I share this, um, I'm going to look like I'm full of myself or I'm, I'm afraid that people aren't going to believe me or I'm going to get called out as a phony or I'm not really sure if this is true, right? It feels like amazing, but maybe I'm just in my head thinking I'm something that I'm not, right? Maybe I've just gone crazy and I've got this Christ delusion or whatever it is, right? Megalomania. I don't think that's the word, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? This delusion of grandeur that we get when our gifts start to awaken. Our human is like, no, no, no. We need to like play it cool. We need to not share this stuff that we're receiving because other people are going to judge us, right? So she didn't tell anyone. And I came and did this reading and I was like, oh, that's really fucking cool. You're channeling Christ energy. Like it's such a pure frequency. So easy for me to say, because I felt it and I said it, right? So with readings for other people, I can just feel and say, but there's no attachment because there's no stories in my head. There's no personal stake in what I'm channeling. So I can see it and there's no emotion or involvement or nothing in it. And so I was able to see that for her. And she was like, Beck, no one has ever been able to fucking verbalize that for me no one has been able to see that within me and that's so amazing and so validating for me to receive because I thought I was going crazy right so when you're channeling stuff around your own soul mission and purpose some of this stuff is going to sound pretty wild right and you're going to be like who am I to do this or you know <laughs> how do I know to do this or how am I even going to get there right these are some of the most common self-belief blocks like I don't know the steps I need to be further along um I don't have what it takes my channel, I can't trust my channel. I can't trust God. We're going to come back and like unpack each of these individually. That these are some of the things that would be playing out. And like I said, there's this shift that needs to, well, I didn't say this, but I'm going to say it now. There's this shift that needs to take place from the way that we've been operating and perceiving and receiving information, which is through our mind, through our filters, through our ego, right? Through our conditioning, through society, a shift into heart consciousness where truth is felt right? Truth is felt in our bodies. It's felt in our heart. There's no judgment. There's no um, conditioning. There's no, it's too big for me. There's none of that shit because it's just felt as true. And learning to trust that when those things feel true, it's because they are. And again, truth is so subjective and there's like all these different layers and versions of truth. Um, and really at the end of the day, all truths are just sub subjective and invalid. And there is only one truth, which is divine truth, which takes in every single perspective. But if something feels true for you, 
you need to learn what that feeling feels like, right? So you can start to trust it. This is why many people don't believe in their gifts, right? They think that they're just making it up. This is the most common thing that I see. I think that I'm just making it up. I think that, um, you know, I, I started talking to aliens and, and they're telling me to do this and that and I'm channeling them this thing. And now they're telling me to go to this place and put this crystal in the ground. And it was wild for me to start trusting some of the stuff, particularly in the quantum realm. Um, it was really easy for me at the start to trust the shamanic stuff, the ancestors, the earthwork, because that seemed logical to my brain. It wasn't hard for me to accept. But then when I started working with grid work, I started working with different galactic races. I started working with stuff that was so unfamiliar to me because I didn't have this framework of understanding in my 3D reality about it. It was so unfamiliar. I really fucking doubted myself. And as a result of doubting myself and this need for constant validation, I put myself in harm's way quite a few times because I was seeking validation and confirmation from people who were really trying to take from me and hold me down and who could see that there was a part of me who needed that validation and they were using it against me, right? Making me weak, um, playing on that part of me that wants to be accepted and told that you're not crazy. You really do have these gifts. You really are that powerful. So me needing other people to feed that back to me constantly and not trusting my own gifts was a huge fucking lesson for me. Um, but like I said, it's difficult because at the start, you kind of need that confirmation in order to start to trust yourself. There's this thing that I heard on a podcast the other day around the law of three, like three people need to validate something or have it as a shared reality for it to be real. Otherwise, it's just a delusion in your head, um, which I think is a, it's a pretty it's a pretty valid way of assessing things. Right. So if you channel something and it feels true and maybe two other people or you get a sign, like a sign could be another thing. It doesn't have to be other people validating it. But if you channel something and you're not sure if it's true, ask for two other things to confirm that for you. So I would like either someone else showing up and confirming that for me or to receive two signs. And once you've received three things confirming that, one being your own, then you know it's legit, right? Um, because some of this stuff can get pretty wild. And again, because we're a human, with our human lens and the messages that we're receiving are being filtered through our brain, through our human lens, we can get in the way of that, right? That's why it's so hard to channel for ourselves because we have so much at stake when it's us. We have emotional charge. We're invested in it. Um, we have our own programming, our own belief system. When it, we're channeling for others, it's, it's easier because like I said, we're just like, well, it's someone else's stuff. I don't really care. <laughs> not that I don't care, but like, it's not, doesn't involve me. It doesn't concern me whether or not this is true doesn't really um, affect me in any way, which is why I don't really channel for people close to me. Like my mom always comes to me saying, Hey, can you channel some guidance for me? Or like, what's the message? And I'm like, I can't mom, because I'm too close to you. I have too much at stake. There's too much of my own stuff in the way for me to be a clear channel. Right. So that's something you really need to know with channeling. It's like, um, when your own stuff is in the way, sometimes it's hard to see clearly yourself. Right. And sometimes pieces will be revealed to you later once you've worked through stuff that you weren't available to receive in its purest form before because you were so tied up in your own shit still. Let's come back. I feel like I'm jumbled all over the place today and I'm sorry for that, but I'm just going to flow with whatever is coming through my mouth. Um, so the biggest block that I see for healers is this inability to trust their intuition. And part of the reason is because some of the stuff that will be coming through will seem really wild. Um, it will seem really unfamiliar. It will seem really out of the box. It will seem like you're just making it up. Right. And here is the truth guys. You are just making it up, right? Because intuition and imagination, they come from the same place and inspiration, by the way, they are divinely guided. They are channeled through, grace they're channeled through you through something else through the soul through the oversoul network through god through christ through source through whatever it is the universe that stuff the creativity the imagination the intuition it all comes from the same place which is this creative energy which created everything right the thing that imagined everything into all existence is the same force that is channeling through you which is why you receive those downloads which is why you receive that information it's coming from a higher place right um, and that higher place is operating in a realm that's non-physical. So literally everything that we have been taught to believe about reality and about imagination and about mystery things like, um, you know, like things like mermaids and fucking dragons and aliens and things that we're told is fantasy fiction. What do you think 
these people are channeling this stuff from when they're creating that stuff it's coming from this same source of wisdom and knowledge which is tapped into the collective consciousness where all of this stuff exists so in the physical realm maybe no i don't see dragons walking around my fucking house which would probably scare the shit out of me anyway if i was to see them physically here right but that doesn't mean that they don't exist on other dimensions or reality or maybe at some point they were in the physical right or there are other places where they are physical or mermaids or fairies or aliens or whatever that is just because we can't see something doesn't mean that it's not real we've been taught in our society very tactically to only trust what we see right we see something and so it's real we see something so we'll believe it i'll believe it when i see it is the paradigm that we are moving out of right No wonder why it's so fucking hard for us to trust our intuition because a lot of the things that we're sensing and perceiving are non-physical, right? Which makes it really hard for us to believe it because it's like, where's the physical fucking evidence? And if the physical evidence was to be here, we'd probably shit ourselves. I had a podcast interview with a dear friend of mine um, the other day and he was saying, sometimes we just got to ask for signs like that they're here and they're really like communicating with us, whatever. Like ask your guide to turn over a cup in the night and then see if that cut. And I was like, fuck. That would scare the shit out of me. I know that they're all real. I know that they're here. But if I was to wake up and there was a cup that had been turned over, that makes me kind of like, that gives me the heebie-jeebies, right? When I'm in a house and there's ghosts and there's shit and doors are slamming and there's physical manifestations of the non-physical stuff, I get a bit squeamish, right? And most of us do because of conditioning, because of the paradigm that says all this stuff is evil and it's bad and it's here to harm us and, and various things that we need to deprogram. But it's also because we're so used to that not having a physical manifestation when we're playing in these realms that if it was to suddenly drop into the physical, we'd be like, oh shit, that's terrifying. I don't want that. I don't want to see that stuff. I'd rather it be unseen. So that's a point that I want to summarize. If you don't trust your gifts because you think you're making it up, if you don't trust the messages that you're receiving because you're making it up, how do you expect other people to trust your channel, to trust your gifts, to trust you, right? Um... And it's a process of practicing and receiving that validation at the start, like find friends who are also tuned into this stuff. I remember at the start when I started moving energy through my body and I wasn't really sure my Kundalini had started awakening. I had a friend of mine, Ailey, who could see, like she could see energy. And I just said to her one day, I was like, look, I really just need you to watch me go through this process and tell me what you see. And I didn't tell her anything about like what was happening or what it was. And she said to me, oh, I see literally energy is moving through your body as you're like saying things and moving your arms. Like I'm seeing the energy physically moving up and out of you. And I was like, cool, validated. Now I know that that's really what I'm doing, right? So I can trust it. I'm not fucking, like I said, there's three people. I had Carly come in and give me some signs about it. I had her validate it and now I was feeling it. So I was like, okay, cool. I can trust this, right? Um, with my channel, with my psychic gifts, it took me years of sending off people readings, of sending off, um, you know, tuning into things for friends, of um, trusting the nudges that I was receiving to do certain things, and then seeing how they paid off or didn't pay off or whatever the lesson was. But like seeing every time I've trusted my intuition and I've taken that step, every time I was told to write a post or email a specific list or whatever it was, there's been a reason for it, which has eventually really made me trust my channel because I've seen time and time and time again, I've been true, right? So it's okay to doubt yourself, guys, is what I'm saying. Like I do it and I'm super tuned in. I'm fucking the most clear channel that I know when it comes to tuning in wild guidance, right? Um, And it took me a long time to get here, but even I have my doubts sometimes, particularly around the biggest stuff. Like I sometimes wish someone could do a reading for me where they were like, this is the vision that I'm seeing for you. Because sometimes guys, when I tune into my vision, I'm like, don't see how that's ever going to happen. Maybe I'm just like delusional. Maybe I'm nuts. Maybe I'm just making it up. Maybe it's what I want to happen, but it's not ever going to actually happen for me. Right. And when other people have said, oh, I see you talking on massive stages. I see you doing this. I see you doing that it validates me and it makes me be like, well, I'm not the only one thinking this. So therefore it must be true. Right. Um, So it's really important for you to have people in your life that can be that clear mirror for you that can help you to discern and trust. Here are some other blocks that I see with self-belief, right? I don't know the steps. I don't know the next step to take. I don't know the strategy. I don't know the way. I don't know how this is going to happen physically in my reality. Right. This is something that we 
are able to channel, right? We are able to channel the steps because it's not us that's channeling the steps. There's a higher version of us who knows all of the steps and we don't have to know them, right? I don't know the steps, self-belief. I don't know what the next thing I should be doing is. I don't know, like, what if there was a part of you who knew, right? What if there was a part of you who knew? What if you were pretending you didn't know? What are you pretending that you don't know, right? That's what one of my mentors says a lot. What am I pretending that I don't know I know? I love that because it's like, what if there was a part of you who really did know those steps and actually you just needed to ask, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? And know that you'll be guided to the next step. And even if it doesn't seem like relevant to the time or to what you're doing, that next step is going to drop in, right? So that's one of the blocks, not knowing the steps, um, not feeling like you've done enough work to open your gifts to um, like, you haven't done enough certifications or studies. You haven't done enough research. You haven't been doing this long enough, like not feeling like you feel like an imposter. Right. And the core wound of this is like, it's kind of a witch wound, but it's like, I'm so afraid to share my gifts because what if someone else comes along and tells me that I'm full of shit, right? What if someone else comes along and realizes I'm just bluffing and I'm just making this up. And then I have to sit with the discomfort of possibly lying of being called a fraud of being told that I sell snake oil right many of us have had lifetimes where our societies have kicked us out they've excommunicated us they've hung us at a fucking on the stake they've hung us they've burnt us at the stake they've hung us have done various things to us because someone sold us out and then like um presented us that we were presenting ourselves as a false prophet right because people are so afraid of this stuff so when someone is legit they're going to discredit them because it makes them feel really insecure. So, so many of us carry this fear of like, what if I'm not, <laughs> what if I'm not legit? What if someone, what if I get into a session with a client and they trust me and they believe in me for this transformation and I can't do that for them? Or what if like my gift's failing me? Or what if what I think I'm doing in the quantum or in the healing space, I'm not actually doing, and they don't get the transformation. And so then they say, oh, you're full of shit and you're making it up. And then I have to sit with the part of myself that thinks that I'm making it up, right? Really big block as well that I see for people. What if I'm just a fraud? What if none of this is real? What if it's in my head? What if I'm crazy? What if I'm crazy, right? Guys, so what if you're crazy? Do you think, like, let me rephrase it this way. What would be a better reality for you? A reality where you're crazy, but life was exciting because you were channeling all this guidance and it was magical and you were connected to all these beings and healing was real and God was real and you know your past lives were real and all this stuff was real, but you were delusional and you didn't know that you were delusional. Then one day when you died, you realized you were delusional that whole time or a reality where none of that stuff was real and you thought you were just making it up and, and you know, you couldn't trust yourself. So then you shut down all this stuff and you're just living in a 3d matrix and life is really fucking boring. I don't know. I would rather think that I'm crazy um, and be living in the delusion of my craziness because it's more fun and exciting that way, believing that all this stuff is real and then maybe discovering that one day I'm crazy than living in a world where it's lacking magic. It's, la it's lacking um, connection. It's lacking juiciness. It's lacking the miraculous. It's lacking the connection to love, to beings, to star races, to all that stuff. I would rather live in a world that feels like fantasy because it's more exciting, right? It's more fun that way. So what if, so fucking what if it's not real, right? Are you bringing people joy? Are you bringing, bringing people comfort, right? What if every reading I did for someone about their vision, about their codex, around their gifts, around all this stuff, what if it was all just bullshit and I was just making it up, right? But the result of that bullshit is that it's making that person feel better because it's faith, right? They're having faith that it's real and that faith is all that it takes for them to heal or for them to show up and make themselves happier or whatever it is that brings them joy right what if that faith was the result of what that where they were coming to me and I was actually lying but I gave them some hope and some faith is that a bad thing I don't know personally I don't think that that's a bad thing if I'm giving people hope and I'm giving people faith does it fucking matter if it's not real or not I'm not saying that it's not real but I'm saying for your brain to like compute this does it matter if it's not real, if it's giving someone hope and it's giving someone faith and it's making the world a better place? Hi, beautiful soul. 
allow me to interrupt this broadcast for just a minute. If you are a soulpreneur on a sacred mission or just someone looking to connect their soul purpose, their gifts and their multidimensional self, I have something I am so excited to share with you. The Soul Mission Accelerator is possibly my most groundbreaking and expansive work yet. It contains 12 low cost, high potency, sacred activations that will have you shifting through old limitations, patterns, karmic loops and blockages at quantum speed. These activations will support you with everything you require energetically to anchor in the reality you desire to create, to call in more clients, abundance, soul tribe, opportunities, self-confidence, and to anchor a soul purpose that is fulfilling and effortlessly abundant. You can grab $44 off the total bundle today by using the code cracked open in capital letters in the checkout or grab each individual activation for just $44 today. You can receive these as many times as you like and they are multidimensional. So they are an epic tool to have in your toolbox. So check the dates down below with all of the information on how to grab them today. And let's get back to this episode. Another massive self-doubt or self-belief block that I see is actually not even a belief in self, it's a belief in God. So belief in the universe, belief that you're supported, belief that somehow, some way, this is all going to work out for you, right? So it's actually a wound of like not trusting, not having faith, not being able to surrender because you trust that it's all leading and guiding you to exactly where you need to be, not trusting your soul to know every step of the way and to be guiding you there, right? It's huge. When you don't trust God, You don't trust your path. You don't trust that every little thing that's happening is somehow leading you there. Then you're going to push against anything that's showing up because you're going to be like, well, I failed. So therefore I'm going to keep failing. Or like this failure is only just meaning that I'm a failure. It doesn't mean that I'm getting closer to anything or this failure is because I'm not good enough or whatever it is. Not that that failure is maybe the exact fucking thing that needed to happen for you to get closer to what it is that you're here to do or to become that person, right? Like stop seeing failures as proof that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't have your back, that you're not good enough, that whatever, like failures are just opportunities for us to learn and get closer. Right. So that's another huge belief that I see um, when we believe that we're not supported, when we believe that if we were to fall down, we wouldn't be picked up. If we believe that, um, you know, people don't have our backs, God doesn't have our backs. We don't live in a benevolent, benevolent, loving universe. And something that's dropped in to speak about, it's kind of unrelated, but it feels related, is that the reason why a lot of us struggle to believe that we're supported, we struggle to believe in our gifts, we struggle to believe in what we perceive to be true, is that as children, maybe our realities were constantly negated, our emotions were constantly negated. So if you grew up with a parent that constantly gaslighted you, gaslit, gaslighted you, that told you, no, your feelings are wrong, that told you, you're not allowed to feel that, that told you, you're making it up. Stop imagining things. Get out of your head, right? So many of us are gifted at a young age. We see ghosts, we see things. And our parents who are afraid tell us, no, that's not real. Stop fucking making it up, right? What do you think is going to happen to that child every time they experience some sort of paranormal phenomenon or like psychic phenomenon from then on? They're going to shut themselves down and be like, well, the last time I told someone this, I was told that I was making it up, that I was, I was, it's not real, that whatever, right? So they're going to stop that. So then as an adult, when you try to bring this stuff online again, there's this wound within you, which is like, I don't want to like suffer that judgment again of someone telling me that, you know, it goes back to what I said about not making things up um, and people, sorry, like saying that you've just made it up and then being called a fraud. There's this wound of like, I can't share this because they told me it wasn't real and my feelings are just going to get negated. So therefore my feelings aren't real and what I feel isn't real. The last thing I kind of want to say, because I feel like, honestly, guys, if I'm being fucking real with you, no, there's one more, actually. One more is that we don't trust ourselves to hold boundaries with our clients. So we don't trust that if we were to call in clients, we would have the strength and the ability to hold our own personal energy, our own personal bubble and keep that distance, right? So we don't trust that all of our life forces are going to be drained constantly, that people are going to be expecting things of us, that... um you know, we're not going to get attacked by our client, whatever it is, some weird shit goes on in our subconscious as to why um, we're blocked around certain things. I am so sorry. I don't even know if I'm going to post this. I think that there was nuggets in there, but I feel like my brain right now is trying to fucking operate with 30 million volts of electricity. So I'm hoping that this frequency beneath this, um, beyond my words, 
that is getting to some point because honestly, I feel like it's been very hard to speak, <laughs> right? Uh, but I trust myself and I trust my channel. So I trust that this serves, guys. If you're struggling to trust your vision, trust your guidance, trust your channel, trust what you're receiving, I'm really good at helping people to validate what they're feeling, right? To validate what they're receiving, to validate um, the messages that are coming through for them and telling you, like, I will tell you what I, I have no fucking personal stake in the matter, right? Other than you paying me for the session, I have no personal stake. There's nothing blocking me from telling you what I see, right? So if you need support, if you're hearing things that you're not sure about your next step, your next purpose, if you need that confirmation, you need that validation, I am more than happy to do that for you. Again, I know I said that we shouldn't rely on others to validate us, but at the start of our mission, sometimes it's really helpful to receive that before we build up that trust where we're like, yes, I know now that this is a truth. I know how to tune into my heart and feel and sense truth. I know how to believe in myself and my mission. And so therefore I don't need someone else. Sometimes guys, I need it too, right? Sometimes I just need someone to confirm something that I'm already feeling. So it's not about putting all of your energy and power into someone else and saying, you give me the answers. It's about saying, I feel this. Can you feel into this too? And then if they match, then you know really truly what you're feeling is, is the truth, right? Like your channel is legit. I want to thank you for watching this episode. And until next time, beautiful souls, I love you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Cracked Open. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share with a friend if this episode has served you in any way. For more information about the work that I do or to get in touch with me, read the show notes or head to beckmylonis.com. Until next time, beautiful soul.